In October of 2025, OpenAI conducted a secondary share sale which valued the company at $500 billion. This made it the most valued privately held company in the world. But OpenAI would not hold the crown for long. Just two months later, it was reported that Elon Musk's space company, SpaceX, achieved a valuation of $800 billion in an employee share sale. SpaceX is planning to conduct an IPO in 2026. They are reportedly planning to price that IPO at a $1.5 trillion valuation and raise well over $30 billion of proceeds. In a recent podcast appearance, Musk says he believes SpaceX could one day have a $100 trillion market cap. For comparison, that is roughly equivalent to the current GDP of the entire world. While SpaceX is undoubtedly a pioneer in rocket launching, we need to put the scale of the business into perspective. The company was founded more than 20 years ago in 2002. According to Bloomberg, they are expected to generate $15 billion of revenue in 2025. A $1.5 trillion market cap is 100 times their annual revenue. Musk has a long history of making grandiose statements and predictions about the future. For SpaceX, he has long talked about ambitions of sending people to Mars and building a self-sustaining colony there. Musk predicted that SpaceX could send humans to Mars as early as 2021. 2021 came and went, and SpaceX is not even close to sending anyone to Mars. The entire idea of a Mars colony is absurd and will never work. We made an entire video about this a while ago, link in the description below. To generate hype for the upcoming IPO, Elon Musk has come up with a new narrative that is perhaps even more absurd than a Mars colony. In November, Musk appeared at an event hosted by SpaceX shareholder Baron Capital. Let's have a listen. Like, like we see a path to... to putting 100 gigawatts per year of solar-powered AI satellite into orbit. Um, and, and having this be actually the lowest cost way to uh, power and operate uh, AI at a very large scale. Um, for reference, the United States consumes roughly 460 gigawatts on average per year, because the average power load in the U.S. is 460 gigawatts. The whole country, the whole country. All electricity of all sources in the U.S., yes. And you're talking about 100 being added. Well, roughly a quarter of the U.S. electricity output. Um, and we, we, have a, we have a plan mapped out to do that. In a different interview, also in November, Musk gave a timeline for his space data center ambitions. My estimate is that actually that, that, that the cost of, of electricity, like, like the, the cost effectiveness of AI in space will be overwhelmingly better than AI on the ground. So far, long before you uh, exhaust potential energy sources on, on Earth, long, long before, meaning like I think even perhaps in the four or five year time frame, the lowest cost way to do AI compute will be with solar-powered AI satellites. So I'd say not more than five years from now. Wow. So according to Musk, within five years, it will be cheaper to make a data center in outer space than on Earth. And SpaceX will launch 100 gigawatts worth of AI data centers into space per year. This idea is absurd on its face. With currently known technology, it is probably not possible to operate a large data center in outer space. And it will certainly not be economically viable. In this video, we will explain why. SpaceX is the biggest company hyping up the idea of data centers in space. But to date, Musk hasn't explained any details, so we don't have much to work with. As it turns out, there's a startup called StarCloud, which is focused solely on putting AI data centers into space. The company was founded in early 2024 and has 12 employees. They have raised $34 million of venture capital funding to date from investors including Y Combinator and NVIDIA. StarCloud plans to make a 5 gigawatt data center in space, which will be used to train and run large language AI models. It will be powered by solar panels. To get a sense of how large 5 gigawatts is, the largest known data center in the world today is the China Telecom Inner Mongolia Information Park. It consumes 150 megawatts of electricity. The largest AI data center is XAI's Colossus Data Center in Tennessee. We don't actually know its electricity consumption, but XAI claims it currently operates 200,000 GPUs. Assuming these are mostly NVIDIA H100s, the total electricity consumption is probably around 200 megawatts so it might be bigger than the China Telecom data center. StarCloud's proposed space data center will be 25 times larger than the largest data center on Earth today. So how do they intend to do this? 
In September of 2024, they published a 13-page white paper explaining the concept. The proposed system would look like this. The actual data center will be in the middle. That's what will house all the NVIDIA GPUs to run AI workloads. It will be powered by massive rectangular solar panels. This satellite will be put into low Earth orbit. You can place the satellite on such an orbit that the solar panels are always facing the sun. Another thing to consider is cooling. GPUs generate a lot of heat. That's why consumer GPUs have fans on them, to prevent overheating. In modern data centers, fans alone aren't enough to remove the heat from high-power GPUs. Instead, many facilities use liquid cooling, where water flows through a cold plate attached directly to the GPU. Heat from the GPU conducts into the water. The hot water is then pumped to heat exchangers that move the heat outside the building, where it is ultimately released to the environment. The cooling of GPUs in space is very different. In science fiction movies, you might see someone freezing when exposed to outer space. This creates the perception that space is very cold. This is a bit of a misnomer. Outer space isn't cold because space isn't anything. Space is an empty vacuum which has no temperature. Vacuums do not conduct heat, making them excellent insulators. That's why thermoses are made of hollow metal with a vacuum inside. This prevents heat from leaving your coffee. Running a GPU in space would be like running it inside a thermos. It would quickly overheat and melt. A cooling fan won't work in space because there's no air. Water cooling won't work either. Even if you brought water with you, you'd have no way to cool it. In space, you need to do something called radiation cooling. Here's a picture of the International Space Station. It has solar panels to power its onboard electronics. It also has thermal radiator rotary joints, or TRRJ, radiator panels. Liquid ammonia is pumped out of the station and through large, flat radiator panels. These panels release the heat as invisible infrared energy straight into space, much like how a warm object glows with heat even in a vacuum. The rotary joint part means the panels can slowly rotate, allowing them to stay pointed toward cold, empty space and away from the sun or the warm Earth as the station orbits. The StarCloud data center would use a similar basic cooling concept, but with a different layout. Instead of rotating radiator panels like the ISS, StarCloud proposes keeping the entire structure oriented so one side constantly faces the sun. Large solar panels will remain sun-facing to generate power, while radiator panels will be mounted to the opposite side, facing away from the sun towards cold outer space. By actively maintaining this orientation, the radiators could continuously dump heat without needing large rotating joints. In practice, this would still require precise altitude control and careful orbit selection to keep the radiators shaded from both the sun and the earth. But it simplifies the system compared to the ISS's rotating radiator design. Putting a tiny data center into space is possible. Technically, the International Space Station is already a data center in that there are computers inside of it. The problem is the scale. The ISS's solar panels generate 200 kilowatts of power. StarCloud's proposed 5 gigawatt data center will produce 25,000 times more power than the ISS. To produce this much electricity, the solar panels will need to be 4 kilometers wide and 4 kilometers tall. This is approximately the same area as Lower Manhattan. You cannot launch such a gigantic structure into space. It will need to be built modularly. Small parts of the structure will be launched one at a time. StarCloud's proposal relies on the use of so-called space buses to move large modules around orbit and assemble its massive data center piece by piece. But no such vehicles actually exist today. In aerospace, a space bus normally refers to the standardized body of a satellite, not a reusable orbital construction vehicle capable of hauling multi-ton structures, precisely aligning them and mechanically attaching them in space. The hardware that does exist, cargo spacecraft, limited satellite servicing missions, and robotic arms like those used on the Air National Space Station either require constant human supervision or are designed to interact with a single satellite in carefully scripted, one-off operations. There is no flight-proven system that can autonomously transport large modules, connect power, cooling, and data interfaces, and repeat this process thousands of times. StarCloud does not propose to build these vehicles itself, and does not name a supplier capable of doing so, meaning its entire modular construction plan depends on a critical piece of infrastructure that currently exists only as a concept, not as an operational technology. The solar panels would need to be 4 kilometers by 4 kilometers. The radiating panels would be slightly smaller, but still massive. Based on the assumptions in the white paper, the radiator panels would need to form a square approximately 2.8 by 2.8 kilometers on the back side of the solar panels. The heat is generated by the GPUs at the center of the structure. You will need to pump the liquid ammonia multiple kilometers to get to the farthest radiator panels. This will require a vast and complicated network of pipes, pumps, and valves. And remember that this is supposed to be built modularly and incrementally, so you will need to somehow attach new radiator panels while the ammonia is still flowing through the pipes. As if these technical challenges weren't already Herculean enough, there's one more problem we haven't even talked about yet. 
Earth's atmosphere and magnetic field normally shield electronics from high-energy particles coming from the sun in deep space. Once you leave that protection, computers are constantly bombarded by radiation that can flip bits, corrupt memory, or permanently damage transistors. That's why systems like the International Space Station don't use cutting-edge computer chips. Instead, they rely on older designs with much larger transistors, which are far more resistant to radiation but dramatically less powerful. NVIDIA's GPUs are on the other end of the spectrum. They use extremely small, densely packed transistors that are highly vulnerable to radiation-induced errors and long-term damage. Shielding can help, but meaningful protection adds a lot of mass and never eliminates the problem entirely. And even if you somehow solve the radiation problem, there's another fundamental issue. On Earth, large data centers are full of technicians whose entire job is to swap failed GPUs, replace power supplies, fix cooling systems, and deal with the constant stream of hardware failures that naturally occur at scale. In space, that model simply does not exist. You cannot send technicians up to replace a dead GPU or fix a leaking ammonia line. Every repair would require a dedicated launch, specialized equipment, and extremely precise robotic operations. Today, there are no robots capable of autonomously diagnosing failures and replacing thousands of individual components in orbit. That means hardware failures would accumulate over time, permanently degrading the data center's capacity. In its white paper, StarCloud claims that its hypothetical space data center will be significantly cheaper to operate than a land-based data center. A 40-megawatt AI data center costs $167 million to build and operate over 10 years. They claim that their space data center will cost $8.2 million per each 40 megawatts, about 20 times cheaper. The assumptions StarCloud used to come up with this statement are fantastical and completely disconnected from reality. StarCloud does not even attempt to estimate the cost of building the data center in space with satellite buses. They just say it will be approximately the same cost as the brick-and-mortar construction of a land-based data center building. Remember that the space buses StarCloud will need to use for the space construction do not even exist. There is no reasonable basis to assume that this theoretical, sci-fi technology will just happen to be approximately the same cost as constructing a data center on Earth. Probably the most outrageous part of their cost estimate is the energy cost. They say that a land-based data center will consume $140 million worth of electricity over the course of 10 years. Their 40 megawatts of solar panels will only cost $2 million. In its white paper, StarCloud assumes that the solar cells will cost just 3 cents per watt. They cite this article from pvtech.org, which discusses the cost of utility-scale solar panels. This has absolutely no relevance to StarCloud's proposed space data center. Terrestrial solar panels are almost always made from silicon cells mounted on glass and aluminum frames. They're designed to be cheap, heavy, rigid, and easy to install on rooftops or solar farms. They assume gravity, air, moderate temperature swings, and minimal radiation exposure. If you launched a standard solar panel into orbit, it would fail quickly. The glass and encapsulants used in terrestrial panels are not designed for vacuum and would outgas, crack, or delaminate. The panel would experience violent temperature swings far beyond what it was designed for, causing mechanical stress and microfractures. Radiation would rapidly degrade the silicon cells, reducing output and causing unpredictable failures. Space-grade solar panels are completely different, usually made from gallium arsenide and related compounds, stacked to capture a wider range of the solar spectrum. These materials are far more radiation-resistant and efficient, but also vastly more expensive to manufacture. According to the Polytechnic Institute of Paris, space-grade solar panels cost around 300 euros per watt, or about 350 US dollars. StarCloud assumes 40 megawatts of solar panels will cost 2 million dollars. This is based on the pricing of land-based solar panels. 40 megawatts of space-grade solar panels would cost 14 billion dollars. There are a couple of other points in their cost projections worth mentioning. StarCloud absurdly assumes that their liquid ammonia radiator system will cost nothing. They also assume that the cost to launch a 40 megawatt cluster will be 5 million dollars. So what is their data source for this launch cost estimate? It's a tweet from Elon Musk. In October of 2025, StarCloud invited the YouTuber HyperChange to tour their corporate headquarters in Washington state. I believe that the corporate headquarters is the only building the company owns. It appears to be located in a residential or perhaps dual zone building, the type of building where you'd expect to find a dentist's office. StarCloud CEO Philip Johnston showed where they test their GPUs and other equipment. They appear to be mostly working with off-the-shelf parts you could buy from a local hardware store. This handful of desks is all the office space they have. The entire startup is basically run in a garage. This company claims it will build a 5 gigawatt space data center with futuristic technology that does not exist and achieve cost assumptions which are not only fantastical but impossible. Somehow, this joke of a company convinced the likes of Nvidia and Y Combinator to give them tens of millions of dollars. 
As far as Elon Musk and SpaceX, their statements are even more outlandish. Musk says SpaceX will launch 100 gigawatts worth of data centers into space per year. This is just a big number that he made up. The fact that there are still people who take this charlatan seriously is a sad reflection on the state of our current society. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. What do you think about space data centers? Let us know in the comments section below. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.